In Dungeons & Dragons, the core of your character's identity comes from your character's class. That's then further expanded upon and defined by the subclass that you choose. Dungeons & Dragons has published many awesome and interesting official subclasses, but if you want to push a little beyond the standard offering, the best place to go for that is the Dungeon Master's Guild. On the DM's Guild, you can find many more subclasses designed by talented designers who know and love Dungeons and & Dragons and wanted to provide more unique playstyles to bring into your game. For a little over a year now, I've actually been creating my own content for the Dungeon Masters Guild, producing projects that I think are interesting and would make good additions to your games. Recently, I released my latest project called Champions of the Blood War. It's a set of 12 subclasses, one for each of the official classes, all of which are themed to fit devils, demons, yugolas, and other sort of entities and themes that you might encounter in the Nine Hells or in the Abyss. It also includes two backgrounds and 11 new spells, and it's a project I created to release in conjunction with Descent into Avernus, Dungeons & Dragons' latest adventure at the time of this recording. Descent into Avernus takes players into the first level of the Nine Hells, which is Avernus, where the Blood War has been raging the Blood War being a combat between demons and devils. I designed this project to make it possible for you to play characters that had powers and abilities that fit the setting and the themes of the adventure. If you want to check out the project, there's a link in the description where you can purchase it. Yes, I am charging for this project. I put a lot of work into it. I think it is well worth the low sum of five dollars that I am charging for it. And if you want to support my creative work either designing for Dungeons & Dragons or making videos like this, it would be awesome if you went and checked the project out. However, if you're not sure yet or you just want more information about the project, then keep watching. In this video, I'm going to break down each of the 12 subclasses I've included to give you a little bit more insight as to what you can expect in Champions of the Blood War. First up is the Barbarian subclass, which is the Path of the Abyssal Champion. This subclass is all about channeling demonic might to enhance your Barbarian's physical strength. By reaching deep down into their anger, your Barbarian touches on the abyssal core of anger and rage. Your Barbarian then channels this anger to be stronger. With the Path of the Abyssal Champion, you can crush your enemies beneath your feet. Literally, you get an ability to do that and stomp down on your enemies. And you can grow in size and wield greater physical might against any who might stand in your way, echoing some of the abilities that would fit the vanguard of the abyssal demonic legions. Those demons understand something really important to a barbarian, which is that charging into battle headfirst isn't a foolish strategy if you know you have the strength to back it up. Next is the Bard subclass, which is the College of Temptation. The College of Temptation allows your Bard to more effectively charm anyone that you come across. It also makes you better able to manipulate those that you have already charmed. It's inspired in equal parts by the Succubus and Incubus, Succubi, Incubi, and also Grast, who is a demon prince. He's considered the dark prince of pleasure and indulgence. This class can have some really interesting narrative advantages, and if you're someone who really loves your charm and dominate features and spells, you'll probably really enjoy the additional utility that this subclass offers you. Cleric subclass in Champions of Blood War is the Savagery Domain. The Savagery Domain embodies a lot of what the Nature Domain embodies. However, it serves more so as a twisted reflection of nature than anything else. Clerics of the Savagery Domain see the world in a web of predator and prey relationships, where the strongest survive and the weak are trampled underfoot. A cleric who follows the Savagery Domain is a terrifying martial opponent, and also empowers their allies to be equally ferocious and savage in battle. These are not your standard prim and proper clerics that hold all their emotions in reserve. Savagery domain clerics are savage most of the time and probably wear their emotions on their sleeves. If you want to play a sort of battle rager priest that can inspire that sort of ferocity in your allies, the Savagery Domain could be right for you. The druid subclass I designed for Champions of the Blood War is the Circle of Yinagu. Yinagu is the demon lord of the gnolls. Known as the Lord of Butchery, he once walked the mortal planes and carved up any who 
cross his path. The remains of those enemies were tainted with demonic energy. The hyenas that fed on that energy eventually became gnolls, which are Yinagu's most known followers and offspring, essentially. Those of you who've seen my other videos know how much I love gnolls. I made a whole video about them. I think they are extremely fascinating and underutilized creatures. The druids of the circle of Yinagu are interested in gnolls. Either they are inspired and motivated or made curious by the power that Yinagu has granted these gnolls, seeing the transformation from hyena into gnoll as a powerful boon which they seek to emulate, or alternatively, they see the twisted forms of the gnolls as a perversion of nature and wish to try to help the gnolls reclaim their place in the natural order of things. In addition to wall shaping into the numerous beasts that a druid can wall shape into, Druids of the Circle of Yinagu gain access to a gnoll form, in which they retain most of their mental faculties and gain some really cool physical abilities. This is a bruiser of a druid that still uses their weapons while wall-shaped. It's a really fun, really cool subclass if I do say so myself. I think it's a cool application of a druid that I haven't really seen before. If you like gnolls, or if you want to play a druid that retains a little bit more sentience in your wall shape, the Circle of Yinagu might be one worth exploring. Next is the Fighter. The Fighter subclass I designed for Champions of the Blood War is the Hellfire Warrior. When I think of the Nine Hells, I think of fire. And while not every plane is like that, I think the idea of Hellfire is fascinating. Hellfire Warriors are sort of like Eldritch Knights, but they haven't been touched by arcane energy. Instead, they've been touched by true Hellfire. They're essentially flame swordsmen. While their abilities are far less varied than Eldritch Knights, they don't have as much utility, they make up for it with raw power. The flames that they utilize can burn even the most resilient of creatures, including creatures that might otherwise be resilient to normal flames. Why? Well, it's Hellfire. It's not just your average fire. This comes from the depths of the Nine Hells. And a true Hellfire warrior has nothing to fear from flames anywhere. In fact, being subject to the flames of the material plane might just make them stronger. I love the narrative direction that I take these classes, and one of my favorite narrative flavors for the subclasses I've designed in Champions of the Blood War is the Monk subclass, the Way of the Chain Devil. The idea here is that at some point in time, a Chain Devil destroyed a monastery. But a young student of the monastery was able to resist and turn away and defeat the chain devil by turning the devil's own chains against them. From this moment, a new practice was born, taking the chains of the chain devil and turning that into a monk weapon, core to this monk's practice. The monks that follow this way emulate not only the chain devil, but many of the most dangerous monsters and beasts around. They use their key to manipulate these enchanted chains in order to execute a variety of devastating abilities. In many ways, monks of the way of the chain devil are similar to battle masters and elemental monks. They have a similar degree of versatility and cool abilities to choose from. If you like building and customizing your subclass with the moves you get to choose, the way of the chain devil offers you quite a lot of choice. And if you've always wanted to use some sort of chain fighting in D&D and been disappointed with the options presented to you, this is something that should get you really excited and hopefully you'll have a lot of fun playing. Most of these subclasses can work not just in Descent into Avernus, but in any sort of demonic or devilish themed campaign, or any campaign where there are demonic and devilish elements to them. These are just one more way for you to inject a little bit of demonic and devilish flavor into any campaign that you want to play, any story that you want to play. It doesn't have to be the focus of the entire campaign or adventure, it could just be a part of your character's personal story. The one exception to this might be the Paladin subclass, the Oath of the Hellrider. This is designed primarily with Descent into Avernus in mind. In Descent into Avernus, one of the core elements is the descent of the angel Zeriel, who leaves the celestial sphere and comes down into Avernus in order to defeat both the devils and demons warring there, taking out both sides at once. Unfortunately, despite some initial success, she ultimately fails and gets co-opted by Asmodeus and becomes a devil herself and the ruler of Avernus. When she came down into Avernus, she didn't travel alone. She had a horde of soldiers 
with her, most notably her Hellriders, paladins sworn to her. The Oath of the Hellrider allows you to play a character who is one of these paladins, or was one of these paladins. You share Zeriel's zeal and fury on the battlefield and make an excellent battlefield commander. If you want to compare it to the Oath of Conquest, the Oath of Conquest is far more individualistic, whereas the Oath of the Hellrider operates as a better commander, a better leader on the front lines. It is a very powerful and zealous martial class, one that derives its divine might from its connection to Zeriel, a connection that has now been co-opted by the Nine Hells. It offers a ton of interesting narrative opportunities and I think operates in a really great role in a party as both support but also a really strong frontline tank. The next class on the list is the Ranger class, and the subclass I have for the Ranger is the Demon Web Ranger. Most people can agree that spiders are scary. Well, spiders in D&D are even scarier. In fact, there is a part of the demonic abyss known as the Demon Web, in which many magical, creepy spiders hail from. The drow goddess Queen Loth makes her lair there on the Demon Web, and has many terrifying abilities, like her arachnid brethren, sister, yeah, you get the idea. The Demon Web Ranger takes inspiration from those abilities, and either through magic or practice practical application emulates what demon web spiders can do. A demon web ranger deals in ensnaring webs and dangerous poisons. They are the apex ambush hunters. Dark vision that they get, the ability to climb and create webs, and the really nasty ancillary abilities they have access to make the demon web ranger a really solid class. If you've ever wanted to have all of a spider's abilities, the demon web ranger is the class for you. Plus. You can even make your own layer. Next is the Rogue. The subclass I designed for the Rogue is the Devilbound Rogue. Now this is actually one I designed a long time ago and tailored a little bit for this new supplement. The Devilbound Rogue takes inspiration from the cunning and treachery of devils in order to hone and develop their own abilities. Devils are known to be some of the most cunning and dangerous entities in all of the planes, and rogues tend to be that for the player classes available. So a rogue that tries to learn a couple lessons from the devils can be a really dastardly class indeed. They learn many of the devil's most nefarious skills, including most notably poisons. The suite of infernal poisons they utilize allows them to debilitate their opponents in numerous ways. No longer are rogues just flat out sneak attack damage, they can also blind and cripple the enemies that they target. The Sorcerer subclass is next on the list, and if you've been interested or looking into the Nine Hells, you'll know the Devils deal in souls. Souls are not only the currency of the Nine Hells, but a major part of the way that the Nine Hells are powered. In fact, the Infernal War Machines consume and draw energy from souls in order to power their functioning. The Amalgamated Soul Sorcerer subclass that I designed for Champions of the Blood War works in much the same way. Either by chance or by nefarious design, this sorcerer was born with a special soul, which means that they can more intuitively and easily practice soul magic. This allows a sorcerer to trap the souls of the enemies that they defeat in combat. And once they have a soul trapped, they can take on some of the abilities of that soul, either the ability to understand certain languages or to exhibit certain senses like blind sight, dark vision, tremor sense, or many other numerous capabilities. In addition, a trapped soul can be consumed to either regain magical or physical might, regaining health or sorcery points depending on your choice. These power boosts are brief, but this makes the class really nasty to play. Kill a super powerful monster and trap its soul. Once you have it trapped, it's up to you whether you want to keep it for the permanent benefits that it gives you or consume it for that temporary boost. I think this subclass helps fix some of the issues that sorcerers have dealt with around their economy and flexibility by leveling out their power curve a little bit more. I also just love the narrative flavor of this class, and I think it fits the theming of Avernus perfectly while also being such an interesting addition to any campaign or adventure because Soul magic is awesome. All right, we are almost there. The penultimate subclass in Champions of the Blood War is the Warlock 
Yugoloth Covenant patron. In the Blood War, the two sides are the demons and the devils, the demons representing the chaotic evil forces, the devils representing the lawful evil forces. But there are also the neutral evil forces, and they are the Yugoloths. The Yugoloths are the arms dealers, mercenaries for hire of this conflict. They play both sides. They are capital M mercenary. They are all about greed, deception, and manipulation, and by extension, any being that makes a pact with this Yugoloth Covenant takes on a lot of those same features. The Yugoloth Covenant is a group of major Yugoloths who have decided to band together for these purposes, and who knows, there might still be infighting within the Covenant, but for the most part, they tend to know that in working together here, they can affect a lot more down there in the world where your character exists. This was designed by a great homebrew Dungeons and Dragons designer who goes by the name Sergeant Briar. He created a bunch of new spells and Eldritch invocations to go along with this subclass. I think it turned out extremely well, it's very well polished, and it explores a part of the Blood War that none of the other classes explore. If you're the kind of person who wants to play both sides, or loves getting one over on people, whether it's players or NPCs alike, I think you'll really enjoy playing the Yugoloth Covenant. Lastly, we have the Wizard class. The subclass I created for the Wizard is the Arcane Tradition of Forbidden Lore. This is kind of an unusual one because I built three paths within the same subclass. Much like totem barbarians who can take on different animal aspects along the way as they level, a wizard of forbidden lore picks a speciality which determines the nature of the forbidden abilities they explore. They hunt secrets and powerful magic that is dangerous and volatile. If you decide to create a wizard of the arcane tradition of forbidden lore, you'll ultimately get to pick from one of three specialities. Demons, devils, and the weave. Demons and devils allow you to harness power from both of those types of entities. You get better at conjuring them into your world, but you also harness elemental magics that are appropriate to those entities a little bit better. For example, if you pick the demon path, you'll be much more effective with the acid that you choose to wield. If you pick the diabolical devil path, then you'll have a much more nuanced control of fire. The specialization around the weave takes a little bit of a different approach, which frames you more as a reactionary caster. You are an anti-mage. You are most effective when you are reacting against an enemy caster, counterspelling one of their abilities, and even doing damage to them when you successfully counterspell or dispel magic. Each of these paths modifies your spellcasting in some way that I hope is interesting. And like all of the other classes, I hope provides you a lot of narrative fodder to explore as your character. I think subclasses are best when they can tie into the narrative of what your character does, and so I tend to create very heavily narrative-influenced subclasses. So that's it. Those are the 12 subclasses in Champions of the Blood War. There's even more nuance to explore if you actually dive right in. Obviously, all the 12 subclasses are fully written out, and there are a bunch of new custom spells within that I didn't even really touch on, in addition to two new backgrounds. These backgrounds are the Cultist, or Ex-Cultist, and the Sticks Touched, who is struggling with recovering the unbridled memories of their past life or lives. Hopefully you get a sense of the amount of work that's gone into the project and you're excited about some of the options that are available to you. If you want to check out more or see some of the sample pages, go into the description, hit the link, it'll send you over to the DMs Guild, and you can see what Champions of the Blood War is all about. There are also a ton of other really great projects related to Descent into Avernus that are on the DMs Guild that I highly recommend you check out. And well, if you want to find out when I make more D&D products or when I make more videos about Dungeons & Dragons, make sure you subscribe below. I'm doing my best to get to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you next week.